Welcome to Closers, brought to you by Man Cave Sports. I'm the DA, David Artsway here, and with me as always, James Kulidianos. What's going on, buddy? How are you? I'm doing great, doing good. Uh, I am not a New Yorker, though. I am down here in the in the desert of Scottsdale, Arizona. Much different feeling out here out west. We don't like the Dodgers, but we're feeling okay about the, the NL West right now because the Dodgers are the new World Series champions. James, what is your feel of New York? Even though technically, like at most times, you're on Long Island, um, Staten Island sometimes a little bit. Like, <laughs> no, I, I live on Staten Island. I give me always a hard time. On. Give me yeah, a, just give me a hard time. How is the feel of New York with the Yankees losing? There's a lot of very depressed people today, but I think they realized that the Dodgers were the better team. They're more pissed off with Aaron Boone and how he performed and Aaron Judge on how he performed. Other than that, the people are normal. The, the people are normal. Okay, so I'm going to jump at you. You've already hit a claim here right out of the gate. Aaron Boone. How are you not happy with how Aaron Boone performed? Minus maybe one choice. Okay, there's a couple of choices that I didn't like about what Aaron Boone did. Number one, game one, bringing in Nestor Cortez. That was an absolute disaster. But more so, you are the leader of that team. In game five, the one that they lost when they were up 5 nothing. he's the leader of the team. Why didn't he go out and talk to Garrett Cole in that fifth inning when everything was going to shit? They had already had a pitcher's meeting. Do it again. No, nope. you got to take him out. So take him out because it wasn't going. I, I don't know. Something had to give. They should have done something, but it, it wasn't a particularly good performance by Aaron Boone, in my opinion. I will get more to that, but I want to say about this: the Dodgers are the the, the World Series champions. They are the World Champions, if you want to put it that way. Spread some uh, little turn a little uh, little people out there, piss some people off. They are the World Champions. Um, congratulations, Los Angeles Dodgers. You were uh, an incredible team all year long from from the from Jump Street. You were one of the best teams in baseball. We were projected a lot of people projected you to be World Series champions. Like yep. from the moment you got Otani, even without Otani, you guys would have been uh, projected to probably win the West and 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 be a World Series contender. Yamamoto, you go out there and get an entire All Star starting rotation. That's that's hurt. Um, it's incredible what this team was able to put together. Even to bringing back KK Hernandez was a was an amazing move. At brilliant, the line, like brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. There's such an under underplayed uh, role like that he that he did. That move was so below the radar by Andrew Freeman. Incredible job there. Um, tell me about your feeling about the Los Angeles Dodgers. Um, obviously, they were one of the favorites going into the season, but um, how the season go? And, and are you happy with them being your World Series champion? Each and every year, there is a favorite at the beginning of the season, and it is very rare that that favorite actually wins the World Series. So I'm very happy that the team on paper that was supposed to win actually won. Number two, I am very happy for Shohei Otani. As we all know, I am a giant Shohei Otani fanboy. No, I don't think anybody knows that on this channel. <laughs> well, if you don't, then you're a retard. <laughs> you're not paying attention. Uh, I love Shohei Otani. I think he's the greatest baseball player that ever lived. I'm very happy for him. And immediately after the game yesterday, I texted you and I asked you, what do you think Mike Trout is thinking right now? Your yes. response was, he's happy for Otani. But if I'm Mike Trout, I'm like, how the hell do I get out of here? Yeah, I think that's an easy reaction. I think Mike, Mike Trout probably in the back of his mind has been thinking that for the last couple of years because mm -hmm. he's trying to take a little bit more of a leadership role. We're kind of hearing that sort of stuff and try to speak up a little bit, which means he's probably a little disgruntled and he wants to actually win some baseball games, maybe play some playoff games. I don't know. I don't know. Um, yeah. But at the same time, Otani did leave and had an opportunity to leave and um, made the absolute most of that. Do you think this... this clears the ipe issue completely is that gone now no that is never no. going to be gone there's always going to be people that are going to bring bringing up ipe and most of the time it's from pete rose fans yes. in all honesty they're all like oh but otani did it even though there's absolutely no proof the fbi cleared him within a week and they just they're looking for a reason to bitch and moan because they want pete rose in the hall of fame i don't understand why but okay but there's always going to be that little 
you know, Ipe thing in the back of your head when you're talking about Otani. Even I made a joke about it. Yeah, and it's it's hard not to just sit there and, and still think about it. And like, did he have the Dodgers in five or Dodgers in six? Like, you know, like I saw some of those jokes. Those are pretty good. Have some fun with it. But I, I where it does bother me, and I get it, I get it. This is a social media world now where yeah. everybody gets to have a big mouth behind the camera. Or sorry, behind the behind your phone, and you don't actually have to own it. Um, because I don't see anybody actually owning it on behind the camera and actually like yeah. say like this is me like and I'm saying this about Otani and Ipe. But it's behind X, behind that that screen. It's really easy. But it's it's where people still actually are accusing him of actually having done something, and that's and then and he may be in a fall guy and actually being serious about. It. There's jokes like have jokes because that's yeah. a that's the world that's where we should be able to like face the uncomfortability of this and the reality that your best friend and your interpreter got caught gambling millions and millions of your dollars yeah. away. So have some let's have some fun with it. But uh, but when people are still like, hey, he did this. I'm sorry, but there's a lot of evidence that he didn't. And there's a there's zero evidence that he did. And so that's that little here or there, but that bothers me a little bit. Getting back to the game, I thought it was pretty incredible World Series. I know it wasn't to what we all thought it was gonna be, where it was gonna be this just like mega stars against each other, and everyone's gonna just step up and, and play just amazing baseball, and we're gonna see the best baseball we've ever had ever had. And 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 um it's usually how it works out, right? Or it doesn't come through with that fulfilling the prophecy. Well, to a certain extent, it did. If you think about it, we were expecting to see Otani versus Judge. And what did we see? We saw, you know, one of the biggest stories was Otani, you know, dislocating his shoulder. And we saw Judge completely screwing the pooch in the outfield. So, yeah, we got to see plenty of Judge versus Otani. Um, and then you also said that we didn't see the superstars. We got to see superstars. Giancarlo Stanton is a superstar. We got to see Freddie Freeman. Freddie Freeman is a superstar. They're former MVPs. Those guys should be, you know, given their credit. Does does Stan have an MVP on his belt? Didn't he have one with the Marlins? I don't know. I feel like he does. I feel like I'm he does. Cool. I'm, I'm mad so about that some sort of stuff. But we do know uh, Freeman, Betts, Otani, uh, Judge. They all they all got him. Um, but you brought up the Judge and the the fifth inning, in, in particular, where Judge dropped the ball. Okay. Bill Buckner and the the whole Boston Boston thing, like they have lived this for until 2004. Bill Buckner and the her curse of, uh, of the Bambino, all of that stuff has been around forever, right? Is this the Yankees Bill Buckner moment? Absolutely. He single-handedly lost the game for them. All he had to do is make a very simple catch, and they would have gotten out of that uh, inning. Just catch the well, the ending wasn't even started. And well, that's the thing about it. It's okay, so we're gonna walk through it, right? So Garrett Cole gives up a base hit. Mm -hmm. Next batter hits a line drive to center field, which aren't always the easiest play, but Judge made a great play on it, moved forward on the ball, and he missed it. Right, he hit it off his glove. If you watch the replay, he was looking directly at first base, directly yep. at the runner, instead of catching the ball and just bringing his glove. You're watching it right here. And you can even watch his head. He's just basically looking straight at the first baseman and trying to come up and seeing if, he's seeing if he needs to make that throw or not. Okay, that's the right move to see if you want to make the throw, but after you catch the ball, right? And then you get a ground ball. Oh, sorry, you got a ground ball to Volpe at, at second base. And was that the, the very stop. next play? The, the shortstop. Short stop. Was that the next play or was that that's Cole was the next play? That, no, no, Volpe was next. Volpe was next. Ground ball to short to deep short hole towards third base. He makes a good play on the ball, and it's a very easy throw that he completely botches. And no one's really talking about this throw as much. Sorry, I can't agree botched with you. an easy play. I can't agree with you. See, that's uh, the problem. Is as a baseball player, I, I want to hear your opinion though. As a baseball player, dude, this is a really easy play, and this is a play you that's that's one of the easiest. You're going to your arm side. You're moving to your right and you're throwing. It's like telling a quarterback they can't run to their throwing side and hit some hit a tight end that's moving with you. That's the same thing. Okay, so that play should have been made. There's no question because Fulpe is a competent shortstop. The difference is, though, 
Teoscar Hernandez, I believe that's who was on second base, got such a good jump towards third that he had to hurry the uh, hurry the throw, and that's why it was offline. No, easy throw. Easy throw, and he never even had to hurry it. He never even had to hurry it. That's the problem. Is he just if he just makes the play to his right and this throws to the chest, easy throw, it he is out all day and all night long. The problem is when we say, Oh, he had to hurry, he had to do this, he had to do that. No, he just had to make the play. And that's the difference, and like that's his Jeter moment. Mm -hmm. And that, that was his Jeter moment to make that play, make that out. But again, like this is what we do when we're when we're looking at the World Series. Jeter does Jeter make that play. G sorry, Volpe had his a moment. A thousand out of a thousand times, and Jeter doesn't even think about it. Because Jeter makes that throw, and then immediately is pointing at the next runner to make the third baseman aware that there's other runners. Like, that's the type of thing Jeter would have done, right? That's, yes. that's what he is. Um, Volpe then, did have his World Series moment, though. Let's call it what it is. In Game 4, he had his World Series moment. He's a kid who grew up idolizing Derek Jeter and hit the Grand Slam. I couldn't be happier for Anthony Volpe in that moment, by the way. Absolutely. And I'm not going to take that away from him. But Jeter made his moments, um, especially in the World Series, defensively. Yeah. Right? Like, like when we go back to J Jeter and his playoffs and all of his stuff, outside of what? His final at bat? Um, or sorry, his 3,000 at bat and like stuff like that. We never really talk about Jeter offensively, even though he's mm -hmm. an incredible hitter. Had a hit off me, so which makes him great. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we talk about Jeter's defense and captain and being that captain. Mm -hmm. um, Volpe's not a captain. He's not. I get it. Like that's a very special thing to be. That it's not. It's very special. He's just. He's not the great. But whatever. It's. It's not an easy thing to just be captain just because your position. Um, but that was his Jeter moment. We're moving to his right throw, and like it, it just make you just gotta yeah. make that play. So that's a routine play. I'm sorry, it the lights on World Series. But if you take that away and you put that in spring training game five, that play needs to be fucking made. Okay, but here's for me out of the three plays, and I'm sure we're gonna talk about the third one next. No, not gonna. We're not gonna talk about the third one. Oh. <laughs> that one, the Volpe one, is the one that pissed me off uh, the least. Because yes, I'll, I'll give you that. Yeah, uh, that one was the That's most the toughest of the three. Yes. So and, and it's pressure and there's runner and I and I think it might have been Kike. I I don't know if it was Kike or, or Teoscar. Uh, it was a Hernandez. It was a Hernandez out there. It was a Hernandez, and then it wasn't they Keith. took a great route. They made a big turn and made the throw hard for him, knowing the throw was going to go there. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a point that needs to be made. But then we get to Garrett Cole. Garrett Cole, Garrett Cole, Garrett Cole. The first thing I said, and I was watching the the replay. I'm oh, sorry, I was watching the game. I yelled, I yelled, get over. The yeah. moment that ball was off the bat, I screamed, get over. And my the person sitting next to me goes, what the hell are you talking about? And then that happens. And so first thing as a pitcher, um, I'm going to say this. There are There's a young group of pitching development people coming into the game who are very adamant that we need to stop doing PFPs. And and I faced this in 2020 spring training. Stop and right there. What's a PFP? Explain that. Pitchers fielding practice, which is the pitchers actually practice like infielders. They take ground balls, they work, they they throw to first. Ground ball, throw to go to second, throw to third, uh, go home, you know, on a quick, you know, a comeback or with base load or whatever, cover first, uh, take a bunt, all that stuff. Basically, that play would be the very first play you did, probably mm -hmm. second play, maybe first, in pitchers fielding practice, which is a ground ball to first, get your ass to first base as fast as you can, and then let the first baseman make the decision. So that's the biggest problem here. Cole made a decision when it's not his decision to make. Yeah. It is it is the first baseman's decision to take him, take the out or to flip the ball to you. It is always the first baseman's decision. You get your ass there and then get out of the way if you need to get out of the way. And so his problem was he came up assuming, and, and as a pitcher, what you don't do is you ever assume. Yeah. Assume that the play is not going to get made. This is why I always tell my pitchers, assume somebody's going to screw up. So be Johnny on the spot exactly where you need to be. Ground ball to third. You got runners on first and second. Weak ground ball to third. You run your ass behind third base and assume they're going to throw to first and screw it up and somebody needs to cover third. Yeah. Don't I assume mean, the shortstop's going to be there or left fielder or whatever it is. If the left fielder is ever there, that's a miracle. But get your ass to first base, Garrett Cole. 
and I, and I and I love Garrett Cole. I think he's a stud, and and he is the one of the only reasons the Yankees were even in this series and in this game. Yep. At the same time, you had one like your job right there is just to get over, and that's and that's but that's World Series. I I, I always go back to the 06 uh, World Series, Detroit Tigers versus St. Louis Cardinals, and Detroit pitchers made like three or four errors in that series, and it was just a giant highlighter of just field the ball and yeah. I get the free out and that's the thing about it no run score if that out is made let alone the other outs but that out was the the out that was that changed the inning to me judge never made an error all year never made an error all postseason one error one error do not let that be the error that defines him because if you cover first base judge is out judge nothing happens to judge yeah, and we're playing, and we're probably playing a game six. It's it's very possible they should have won that game, and even even later in the game when they had some chances, I even I texted you. I said Yankees are going to win this game, and it never happened. I mean, just a just a great job by everybody in the Dodgers organization, and especially Dave Roberts. I can't believe that some people are saying that Dave Roberts didn't do a good job managing this series. I thought he was exceptional. I thought he was absolutely exceptional. I thought he did a great job of managing the series. And, and and managing moments like that, and that's a, that's the beauty is one of the things that made Dave Roberts Dave Roberts is the fact that he stole second base, right, with the, with the Red Sox against the Yankees to extend it on a game three, a uh, game four, to extend the series to go to game five, all that all that fun stuff. Um, those little things are what made him um, kind of famous in who he is, right? Yeah. And so that's the, that's the remarkable thing about this is like that's kind of what separated the Dodgers from the Yankees in game five is those little things those little moments to where they they followed through with it and the yankees didn't if i had told you before the season that a team in the world series was going to have only three starters and then on the fourth day they were going to have a bullpen game would you say that that team would win a world series right no. there's no chance nobody would say that and if i told you oh tyler glass now uh, he's not going to pitch, and Clayton Kershaw, he's not going to pitch, and yep, right. you. But what he did with that pitching staff was incredible. I mean, yesterday the the starter was out of there after an inning and two thirds. They should have lost that game, and somehow he pushed all the right buttons and got the right pitchers in there. I mean, Walker Bueller, he pitched oh, what right. two days ago. Yep. And he was incredible. Speaking of Walker Bueller, how much extra money do you think he made over the last three with his last three appearances? Easy $5 million. The belief, the belief in his health. That's what it is. The belief in his health and that he is able to come back. That's the big, that was the big knock I would have gone into the offseason with him. Was, yeah. Is he healthy? Do we know anything like this? I mean, I mean, these are the, I mean, Kyle Hurt, River Ryan, Emmett Sheehan, Gavin Stone, Gonsolin, Glass now, Yamamoto for most of the year, May, you're, you're looking at Kershaw. These are guys on the IL. Yeah. That's all the best rotations in all of baseball. And that's those guys are, are, are IL. And so it's amazing what he was able to do. But speaking of IL and, and guys hurt, Judge and Otani. This is this to me is actually like a, a, a big thing here. Judge and Otani, who was the bigger disappointment in the World Series? Hundred percent, without even thinking twice. Yes, I'm an Otani fanboy. It's got to be Judge, without a doubt, because the second biggest that was a roller coaster hit, of emotion right there. By the way, yeah, the <laughs> second biggest hit in the entire playoffs was Otani's. In game one, when the Dodgers were dead to rights, they had absolutely nothing going for them. Yes. He said, you know what? I'm going to hit this ball. He almost hit it out. A double that was an error that turned into a triple. That's what brought them back in game one. If the Yankees win game one and they're not completely deflated after the grand walk-off grand slam, this is a series. But that hit by Otani was by far the second most important hit in the entire playoffs. Uh, if they win game one, meaning the Yankees, yes, the Yankees, I 100% believe the Yankees won the World Series. Uh, 
I'm not so I, sure. I, I, I just think then you're going into it. You have that bullpen day set up. That's pretty much a guarantee to win. So you now you're looking at two wins out of your first four games, like and and you still have like, I, you know I don't know I I'm looking at this going like I I think it's a guaranteed win and then they're gonna the Yankees are still set up for the their pitching I, I don't know but I think you go seven I think I it goes seven at the very least I, again I had always picked I I'd picked the Dodgers in six it was like kind of like my pick when I actually had to be put up onto it picked the Dodgers in six I, I thought Fernando Valenzuela just that that sixth game was on his birthday I thought it was like I saw a tweet that like somebody said the Dodgers sacrificed Fernando for the World Series title I, I think that was pretty creative and funny and messed up at the same time um, so let me ask you we're talking I, I gotta about say this one. to me to me, the biggest, the bigger disappointment, I got to agree with you, is Judge, though. Judge is the bigger disappointment to me in all of this. He, Otani was still at least coming through with runners on base. He did it throughout the whole playoffs. And then he got hurt in uh, game four or whatever it was, game three and all that game stuff. game three. Game three. He got hurt in game three. He was not the same in game four and five. Does his, I don't care what you say. Like they told me, I'm watching game five and they're like, oh, his swing is great. Like you can't tell me he's still hurt. I'm sorry. What fucking swing were you watching? What, yeah. what, his reaction after every pitch, all yeah. he was doing was rotating as fast as he could. And then he was holding his arm after every single swing with a wince. Yeah. I don't care. Like, are you, how stupid are you to be able to not see that? Yeah, it, it made no sense to me. It was very obvious that Otani was hurting. A lesser man, a lesser human being wouldn't have even played in game four or five. No, no chance. Uh, no chance. No chance at all. I, and that's the thing about it is, is he was still, was still able to do it. He didn't really provide anything to the team other than still like you can't mess up uh, right. against them. But again, he was an easy out. I'm sorry. I'm watching those swings. Yeah. Going, I'm throwing the ball away and up, like away and up, away and up. Or um, even up and in. Well, that's why I'm sorry. That's why I meant up, up and in. Oh, down, away, anywhere away, and then up, up and in because his his hands could not even get to those balls. Like he's just spinning off. Great. The only thing you're gonna do is fed a foul ball. Uh, but again, Judge is the bigger disappointment to me. I, I and just in the series in general. And I'm not even saying about the error. The error is a big one. It's in a three to one World Series game. Um, I get it. If you win it, it's real. Makes it super interesting. Um, World Series, and I actually think the Do the Yankees might have been able that first team to pull it off. But this is why teams that go down three nothing don't win World Series because yeah. one inning and you're done. And that's the thing about it is like you you don't give yourself any room to breathe. And this is what happens when you're when you use your bullpen every single goddamn game of this playoffs. You use you use your Clay Holmes, you use a Weaver every single game basically. And oh, shocker, you get down to it and your bullpen's struggling. And, and that's the thing about it is like when they really needed the bullpen this whole World Series, they weren't there. I get it. Garrett Cole was the dude that, that ended up giving it up. But at the same time, like you're just destroying these arms and yeah. they've got no chance to, to, to be in there and to be healthy and to give you what you need. You know, and that's that's the thing about it with Boone. I, I don't understand it. They they kept going to these same guys every single game shocker they struggle because, because that's what analytics tell him to do yes but it's uh, it's funny though the analytics are good in certain places and not in others because the analytics say that Nestor Cortez should have never came into game one because he was giving up everything to to, to um Freddie Freeman this guy was hitting 600 off of him right. or the analytics there so oh. it's it just it, it makes no sense it really doesn't i mean to me aaron boone taking out garrett cole in game one screwed him over there was no reason for garrett cole to come out because analytics say if you face a, a team three times they're going to catch up to you really you're garrett you've got garrett cole he's one of the best pitchers in all of baseball let him do what you pay him to do at, there's moments and times where I sit there and say the best thing for the team is just to stay, keep the pitcher in there or to take the pitcher out. Like the best, the the best opportunity the Yankees had to win that ball game was to keep Garrett Cole in, yeah. and that's where it's like, ooh, like I don't know what game they're watching, but you keep Garrett Cole in there, especially the fact that you guys just got a lead and all that stuff. Like keep him in. 
uh, keep them in there. All right, I gotta, I've gotta ask this. I, I made a little list here, mm-hmm. and you have not. I didn't tell you I was gonna ask this or anything. So, ooh, what do you think when we look back and we're a couple years down the road, or even next year, or a couple years? I'm gonna give you some choices here. What do you think is the biggest moment that we're gonna remember this World Series? Okay, okay, one. That it's that the Dodgers redeem themselves after the 2020 and, and spending all the money like justified the the world the World Series was justified the amount of money they spent. Okay. Okay. Two, Garrett Cole and taking him out of Game One, or Garrett Cole not covering first base. Freddie Freeman and Grand Slam and and the home run in four straight World Series games, six straight games in the playoffs. Cole, Judge, Volpe in their errors. Then in the fifth inning, uh, Judge and Otani collapsing. Chaz Chisholm, like having a Jazz Chisholm having his moment and finally becoming like a Yankee. Um, or Soto's last Yankee game. Well, we don't know if it's going to be Soto's last Yankee game. We don't. But we don't. But I'm hoping. I'm praying <laughs> because I want him to come over to the uh, to Queens. Um, I mean, how can you not think of Freddie Freeman? It's it's either Freddie Freeman with the Grand Slam in Game One, or it's uh, or it's Aaron Judge just disappearing. Because I can give Otani a pass because he was hurt. Bottom line, he had a crap Game Two. He did what he did in Game One, and in Game Three he got hurt. So to me, it's an incomplete for Otani. So I've got to consider Freddie Freeman the front runner for what I'm going to remember. A walk-off grand slam in the World Series. I mean, that's crazy. That's back backyard stuff. That's you know stuff of legends. I mean, we still talk about Joe Carter. Well, Joe Carter's a little different, but this is more yeah. Kirk Gibson-ish. There's more Kirk, a lot more Kirk than it is Joe. Um, and and guess what? There's already a baseball card out there that is dual signed by Kirk Gibson and Freddie Freeman for walk-off Dodger home runs. Believe of it or course not. there is. Right? Yeah. Like who would put it against whoever it is that's creating the cards? Yeah. Um, yeah uh, Jazz Chisholm, I'm not really going to remember this too much. A great series, great whatever. Stan, no. great series. That's like whatever. Otani, I don't think we're going to think about it as Otani much because they, it doesn't matter, dude. You got the ring. Yeah. Um, even though he was incredibly bad and incredibly good with guys who are on base, <laughs> incredibly bad when no one's on base, that good when they're on base. What would you prefer? I, I'd prefer that over the opposite. Oh, with, without a doubt. It's like <laughs> a reliever giving up runs or giving up other people's runs. I'd rather have somebody yeah. him not giving up other people's runs. That means he's coming into problems versus run. Anyways, um, Soto, we don't know if it's the last moment. Again, we're not. I don't think this is how we're going to remember Soto. So he's got to no. wait. He's 26. Um, Freddie. Freddie's a good one. But I think I think when people talk about the World Series, they're going to talk more about the Yankees collapse. And not necessarily that, that, that the collapse made the Dodgers win, but the collapse definitely made the Yankees lose. Yes. And it definitely gave them away. I think when we sit back historically, we're going to look at this and go, they made some pretty big mistakes. Like the Nestor Cortez, the... The, the Garrett Cole taking him out, the collapse of the bullpen um, at times. And without a doubt, this game, it might not have won the World Series, but it definitely wouldn't have lost this game if they would have just made those, not made those errors, right? And they're, they weren't bad. They weren't like borderline. They were just all bad play, like really yeah. bad. There were Little League bad errors. Yes, there were Little League errors. I'm surprised, though, that you didn't add one more thing into the little what are we going to remember? Because I'm always going to remember those two jabronis in oh, right field. No, to be honest, they're, they're, nobody's going to remember these two idiots. And and here's the thing about it. For everything that we are making about them, Mookie Betts made the play. Yeah. It's an out. Like, they didn't stop the play from happening. And that's the thing about it is – is I don't know why any Yankee fans are making them heroes. No. Outside of the fact that, that they what they tried to do, it's like they got no. Mookie Betts still made the play. They didn't stop anything from happening. Their two idiots still didn't catch the ball. They didn't. Uh, but nobody. All making... they did was take somebody who made a play and try to make him not make a like. I don't. I don't get why anybody looks at these guys as heroes, other than the idea that they are so in love with their team that they're willing to basically fight a baseball player. 
Yeah, nobody's making them out to be heroes. Oh, yes, they are. Know. Barstool had them on. Barstool had them in. Like, well, Barstool is a bunch of idiots. They've got a Kentucky Fried Chicken guy and a fat guy named Frank who likes oh, to yank right. the Mets. Okay. Who gives a rat's ass about this. Barstool? What do you think about Frank? I think he's a fat bastard that knows less about baseball than I do. I think I don't understand the obsession with Frank. I, I get so annoyed by personalities like this that are there's nothing to them besides they're like they're trying to play that they're funny or that they're or I don't know what's the, the idea behind it. it. I don't like know this why guy I know. It's like this guy I know, Clippy Jones. He thinks he's funny. He's not funny. Ah, <laughs> Clippy, I like Clippy. All right. <laughs> um. <laughs> What was your reaction when you saw those two idiots in the outfield? What, what was your first thought? Because immediate what ejection, me- immediate lifetime ban from baseball because um, you're not just interfering. Interfering yeah. happens. Like reaching over the fence and always wanting to – like, dude, the, the the Yankees won an ALCS game because a kid reached over the fence and caught a ball against the Orioles right. back in 98, whatever it was, 97. Um, I might be wrong on the day. But, like, and they made him legitimately a Yankee hero because he reached over and caught the ball and they called a home run. Like, yeah. they didn't replay. They couldn't do it. That's made the play. These dudes, jabronis, idiots, douchebags, physically were trying to harm him. And yeah. one guy grabbing the ball, okay, one guy grabbing his arm, and it's like, what... In what world do you think this is normal? And uh, the best is these are fuck, these are Gronkowski's like friends. Like that's exactly <laughs> what like the most Gronk thing I would ever think was that. And like, but you would ha- you would think he, they would have a little respect for the game. But like, people are comparing it to Bartman, and I don't understand why like, people are trying to compare it to, it to Bartman, but also say Bartman wore this the rest of his life. These guys are heroes. Bartman had a ball with his own team. <laughs> trying to make a play and interfered technically wasn't interference but got in the way of his team making it out where you're taught if it's your team get back yeah let them make the play Bartman he, 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 like hey like I, I feel bad for it's horrible for Bartman because he's just the ball came to him yeah. could have been the guy behind him and the, or the person in front of him but it was him but he got in front of the way, and Moises Alou, to be honest, was the was the person who ruined this for him and, and ruined his life. I, I put a lot of it on Moises Alou and his reaction because he oh, way overreacted. Moises Alou just runs right back in there. Nothing happens. Like Bartman gets a little shit, but not like he did. Yeah. Um, these idiots, like, Betts makes the play, and then they try to get involved. To me, that's the problem. And then that's a like, get out for life. For life. Gone. Um, before we move on, I do want to mention, you, you talked about Jazz Chisholm earlier, and I do want to talk about Jazz a little bit, because I got some egg on my face. When the Yankees traded for him, I just said, eh, no big deal, just a guy. Hey, he was very thing. average. His data was very average. Yeah, but he played spectacularly. He was great at third base this entire time. He made some beautiful plays, and when the lights were on him, and it's probably because he didn't have to be the guy. When you don't have to be the guy, it takes a lot of pressure off of you, especially when you have Derek Cole, you got Aaron Judge, you got Soto, you got you know Giancarlo Stanton. But he played incredible. If he can keep this up for the rest of his Yankee career, he's going to be beloved, and I'm very impressed with Jazz Chisholm. The only thing that I'm a little afraid of, and they mentioned that on the telecast last night, that he's very emotional. He might be too emotional, where you got to calm this guy down all the time. And I worry when he's too emotional, is is he just going to lose his mind at some point? Yeah, and that's that's the one thing that usually happens in New York. Like we thought, Randy Johnson was never emotional, and then you get a reporter in his face, and he becomes very emotional. <laughs> you know, right? Yeah. Or like, uh, there's things like that that happen that you got to. Um, be careful in New York because it's going to come out the wrong way, the wrong time, and during a slump, and the team sucks, and you're now the most hated villain in Yankee history until the next one comes along. And that's the problem to me is he's an average player that played well above average during the playoffs, had some huge moments, huge, huge, huge moments, had some energy in the team, a little swagger, a little different than Soto swagger too, and a little like like style, I guess. I don't know how how you would how you call it. But I loved it, and he came up huge. And um, speaking of Soto, um, is this his last game? Is this his last game as a Yankee? 
I think it's the last game as a Yankee. Uh, yes. You don't hire Scott Boris unless you're prepared to go to the highest bidder. And, you know, as the offseason begins, you know, next week we'll start looking at it and we'll start talking about some of the free agents, where they're going to go. I certainly have my ideas of where Soto who is going to go after Soto? And if the reports are true that the Dodgers are going to go after him, God help us. That team is going to win for the next 50 years. Um, I think it's Soto's last game. You know that Hal has repeatedly said that, the, you know, the, the luxury tax threshold, I don't want to go over that. You're going to have to give this guy some major money if you think Soto's going to stay. And I don't think they're going to pony up the dough. And I think I know where he's going. Yeah, you think he's going to be a Met or a Dodger? I think he's going to be a Met, but we'll talk about that more. There's a couple of dark horses there, though. There's, you know, three or four teams that could legitimately make a run at him. Um, without a doubt, there's some dark horses here. And the thing about it, the Dodgers have established how to work contracts mm -hmm. for five, four hundred million dollar players and be able to make it make sense. Um, so and I, I don't want to. are sitting there watching that and going, oh, and Stevie Collins and they're going, oh, and the Dodgers are going, oh, because now everybody's going to do that. He's going to be a Los Angeles A or not Los Angeles, <laughs> Las Vegas A, Los Angeles, a Las Vegas A. And he's going to play where the next couple of years? <laughs> I don't know, Sacramento, dude, Sacramento's going to be the bomb. going to be okay. sold out every well, night. It's funny that you mentioned the contract because I actually have some really wild ideas about the contract. And I'd like to actually bring on a former GM friend of ours, if possible, to talk about it and see if my ideas are just funny or feasible. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think Soto's, I think Soto's done in New York. Yeah, I don't know. I, I actually think he's going to be a Yankee. I just don't think there's a way the Yankees, with the momentum, with what he did, uh, how they he just created another atmosphere. And that's the thing about it. And that's why Ju they kept Judge. I, I, there's a lot more behind Judge and the captainship and all that stuff. But at the same time, when you know it's right, you know it's right. Like The, only, the one that's going to be interesting is it's the Nats. The Nats have a lot of money to spend and a team up and coming. I'm not saying they're going to do it. I have no idea. It's a lot of money at the same time. You know they've got, they've got money. They've done it in the past. They need that next little oomph, and he's a Nat. Like, and if he does that, he's going to go to Hall of Fame in a Nats uniform. And that's the interesting concept for a team where he came from, getting a lot better. I don't know if he would do it. I don't know. I'm just saying it's a team to watch out for. Because I guarantee you they're going to pop up and be like, hey, remember us? Did you like it here? We we got a World Series too, dude. Like, it's the only one you got right now. Um, it's just going to be interesting. Um, Bronny, oh, it's not, not Bronny, uh, with <laughs> Soto. Like, the thing about Soto, I, I saw this too. John Boy tweeted it or X'd it. And, I, and this is one of those things that bother me so much is when, when somebody's trying to search for something about a player and try to so hard to make that player different. And he goes, Soto was the last one out of the dugout just taking it all in, watching the Dodgers celebration. And, and it's just like, a, it's like a, wow, like what a guy. Like, man, it just matters differently to him. But he wasn't the last one. Jason Dominguez was. And, and that's the thing. Like They show Soto getting his stuff and leaving. And literally after he walks down the dugout, Jason Dominguez gets up and, and walks behind him. It's like, are you an absolute idiot or are you just trying to sell a narrative? And it's like, there's another player in this video behind him that actually spent more time watching this. And he might be the future of the Yankees. And it's like, why you could have sold that you could have been like the present and maybe the future of the Yankees watching the Dodgers but no it had to be about Soto no well, that doesn't get clicks right actually I think that would get more clicks I, I, I don't know uh quick question for you before we move on Giancarlo Stanton did the last five months of his career completely change Yankee fans thoughts on Giancarlo Stanton and his career? couldn't have been better it's the same as the Soto effect. What he did in the playoffs and how he, he handled these last five months, like everything behind it, a thousand percent, man. Like he changed Yankees perception forever. And it, it, like this is going to change Hall of Fame kind of voters' perception if, if he can just stay healthy. Like, yeah. Because he's a borderline Hall of Famer. He's going to have the 500 home runs. Yeah. Uh, 
I mean, he, he definitely changed my perception of him. Uh, and I like the fact that at some point he realized, hey, you know what? Let me not go all out each and every time because I want to stay on the field. That was smart by him. But his postseason numbers, what he did, he really changed a lot of people's perceptions because tell you what, if he went over the series – or if he went, if he was terrible in the playoffs, he would have been out of here. Somebody would have, they would have traded him and ate some of that money. Without a doubt. They would have ran him out of there. Um, and yeah, just justifiably, like 100%. All right, on to... Well, one last thing that I just want to talk about, um, because you know me, I'm Otani, so I got to mention Otani every chance that I have. What I loved about Otani in the post-game celebration, was he front and center? Was he the guy? No. Absolutely. No. And I love that about him. He was kind of there in the middle. He was hanging out with uh, Yamamoto. They were talking. They were laughing. But he didn't make it about him. Most superstars, $700 million players, they're up in the middle. I was expecting him to be holding the trophy, but it was Mookie Betts the whole time. It seems like he just fit in perfectly. He didn't want everything to be all about him. He let everybody have their their time in the, in the sun. Yes. Yes, and that's why what, what makes him incredible. Um, so outside of World Series talk, we got to bring it right back to the Bronny watch. <laughs> Bronny James. Oh, Bronny James, just the stud, the man, the myth, the legend. Yep. If his hair only looked like you, he would be more popular. The guy who's always in, already in a bunch of commercials, and it's had no reason why we're talking about him besides himself and not his dad at all. James, he scored his first points. Um, two points. He's got two points. He's got a total of eight minutes on the season. Two points. He does have a rebound and a couple assists, so he's he's passing a rock and a steal. Is he the next coming Michael Jordan? Uh, absolutely. I mean, you're talking about that. That bucket that he made was just a thing of beauty. You know, that, that one for two from the floor in, in his – game in Cleveland where he was treated like the messiah that he is that, that's it he's the next guy uh, in all seriousness I'm trying to find a text that somebody sent me last night that I think is just the funniest thing that I've read in a long time I'm looking for it um, so please talk amongst well, yourselves I got, I got one I sent you though because it and this is well like, that's that's the one I wasn't gonna give you too much credit but I, I gotta give this Sean Johnson on X I'm gonna I have <laughs> They just said this. I didn't say it. I don't necessarily believe it, but he said, Bronny got subbed in and they treated him like the varsity manager with Down syndrome who finally got the suit up for senior. Yes. Yeah. And now let's leave it right there. Bronny James and the Bronny watch continues. So thank you for tuning in to another closer. Whoa, 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 oh, whoa. What? Stop. Yes. Stop. You're always so quick to end it. Let me ask you one question. Yes. We got to get back to baseball for one second. If Garrett Cole went to top velocity and learned pitching from top velocity pro, would he have covered first base? To cover first base is the first thing we work on. That's all we do. That's all we do with top velocity pro is work on covering first and getting over. Well, since we mentioned it, can you tell everybody a little bit about Top Velocity Pro and yes, how to come get on out? Team? Yeah, message me, Top Velocity Pro. We will make you the best version of yourself. We teach pitching, and we are damn, damn good at it. That's what we do. We're good at and it. That's why I always tell everybody: is whatever you do, if you're good at it, be great. We're great. That's just damn. That's that's just what it is. And if you're interested in joining David and learning how to pitch, please mention that you saw me talking about Top Velocity Pro because he never gives me any credit. And I want him to know that me stopping the show so he can get his plug in is the reason he made money. And I want my freaking cut. Yes. Thank you for doing that, James. You're very welcome. And with that, have a great week, everybody. We'll talk to you next week right here on Closers.